Hey there, YouTubers. It's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. And today we're going to talk about a conundrum that many residential homeowners face when it comes to bonding and grounding of their solid copper cable, uh, which is shielded. In other words, when you install shielded cable, uh, whether it's residential or commercial, uh, you have to bond the cable shield. Now, you probably already know you need shielded termination hardware in order to you know, continue the, the shield bond to the termination hardware. But what if you have a situation where you've got an ethernet switch that only has a two-prong AC to DC adapter? How do you complete the bond? The, the answer is you can't. Uh, even if you were to hook up a shielded patch cord from this shielded keystone to the switch, um, even though the switch has metal switch ports, it's still not going to bond your cable shield and drain off any excess energy or electrostatic discharge to ground. Another problem is you're going to face, for example, if you're using a shielded patch panel like this one right here, you've mounted it into your little rack frame on your wall, and then you notice that they give you this measly 12-inch uh, long bond wire. Now, this needs to be bonded to ground somehow. Well, where are you going to bond it at in a residential environment? You've got AC outlets, but they're probably nowhere in range of this wire. So how do you deal with that? How do you get your uh, Ethernet cable in a residential environment bonded to ground? And this also applies maybe even to smaller commercial environments where you're not rack mounting and not use, you're not using a rack bus bar and a secondary bus bar and things like that like you would see in a commercial building. So how do you get around these problems? Well, this video is going to show you how to do just that. If you're a lucky individual and you happen to have a 19-inch switch, for example, and it's a big switch and it's a, more, one of the more expensive switches, uh, it probably has an AC internal power supply that you can simply plug in and then plug directly into your three-prong outlet. And in that case, then you could plug in your patch cable to that switch and it would bond to ground properly, no problems at all. I'm, I'm gonna digress a little bit. Make sure that your three-prong outlet that you assume is correctly wired up and, and actually running to ground properly um, is in fact actually wired up properly. So head to your nearest hardware store if you don't have one on hand. It's a three-prong outlet tester and it lights up telling you if you're wiring on the plug or if on the outlet is correct or not. So make sure this is right before you count on this method, uh, because it does require on a properly wired outlet. What you've got going on is you'll, on your shielded patch panel uh, that came out of the box, you've got this bond wire that came with it. And it's 18 AWG, and it's, well, it's kind of pathetically short. It's, it's only like eight, no, not even, it's about a foot, if that. And so what's going on is they, they're counting on you to have like a, a rack bus bar or something in, in your rack. In a residential situation, I don't see you having a big copper bus bar in your rack. So um, this becomes kind of useless, especially if you don't have an AC outlet within range to screw this to. So what you have to do is you have to create your own bond wire. And so uh, what I did here is I detached the existing bond wire, and then I took some 10 AWG green uh, jacketed bond uh, ground wire, TH, THHN, and again, it's 10 AWG. I bought a couple of uh, ring terminals and a crimper, and I just cut like a five-foot section, and I then crimped uh, both ends. I screwed uh, the new, uh, the, this new end back into the patch panel, and then I attached it to the center screw of a properly wired outlet. Basically, you're going to back out the screw. You're not going to take the faceplate off. And then you're going to put the, the ring terminal here, screw it back in. It's going to screw that, um, that bond wire to the top of the outlet. It is not a safety consideration, uh, so don't worry about that. And we upsize the conductor to 10 AWG uh, because 18, if you were to make this long enough to reach, 18 is not a thick enough conductor for the distance and the resistance. So 10 is what I recommend you do. And even if you are using 10, don't go over six feet. Again, resistance over distance becomes a problem. 
now we've effectively got a bond at this outlet to the metal patch panel, to the shielded keystone, to the shield that's in this cable, this Ethernet cable here that's behind the, the uh, keystone jack. And so anything that you, uh, anything that occurs is now, this cable shield is bonded to ground. So it's safe from electrostatic discharge to a reasonable level, um, EMI, RFI. And in fact, if you're interested in protecting like a, an expensive switch or something, you could even use unshielded patch cords from the shielded keystone to your switch now because the bond is already complete. Your cable shield is able to drain off at the outlet here. So you can actually use unshielded patch cords. And that will actually help protect your uh, network switch in the case of a more severe ESD hit. So it kind of isolates your switch a little bit. That actually is uh, a method that I use sometimes, especially when I'm dealing with outdoor cable. So um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, ring the notification bell, visit True Cable and, uh, at our website, truecable.com, visit our Cable Academy. And with that, I'm going to say you have a great day. Happy networking.